Hello everyone. I hope you're joining us today on Apollo 24/7's Health Hub. We know that stress, lifestyle changes and genetics play a role on our health and most of us, especially women, go through these health disorders very silently. Let's break the silence. Today, let's meet Apollo's top gynecologist on a one-to-one -one conversation and let's understand how we can deal with gynecological issues. Ask anything about menstrual issues, infertility, pregnancy or hormone imbalances. Let's talk it out. Join us in this live session where Apollo's top gynecologist Dr. Bindu is going to answer your questions. See you there. माल पूरा हाँ सर मम्मी पूरा है पापा टाइम पे है अपोलो से है सर थैंक्स सर पापा के बीपी का इशू है सेवी मेडिसिन हैज टू बी ऑन टाइम हेल्थ के मामले में शुअर रहना जरूरी है इसीलिए पाए अपनी पूरी प्रिस्क्रिप्शन की डिलीवरी सिर्फ दो घंटे में डायरेक्ट अपोलो से डाउनलोड अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन नाउ रिपोर्ट सारी तैयार है हाँ हाँ सारे हैं सब एक्यूरेट है ऑफ़ कोर्स अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन से है आपको तो पता है ना पापा योर थायराइड रिपोर्ट्स हैव टू बी एक्यूरेट आई सॉल्व रेड तुम बिल्कुल अपने माँ पे गई हो हेल्थ के मामले में शुअर रहना जरूरी है इसीलिए हम देते हैं एक्यूरेट रिपोर्ट्स वो भी एक साथ टाइम पे It's always been there, standing between you and your health. A wall, between a pain that won't disappear and a doctor who magically appears. Between a long wait on a hospital bench and staying right where you are, at home. Between finding yourself out of medicines and finding them at your doorstep, whatever the time. Between years of health records all over the place and all your records in one organized access from anywhere place. Between your current regimen and the recommended routine. The wall. We don't need it anymore. Say hello to Apollo 24/7. This is India's largest end-to-end -end omni-channel healthcare ecosystem, designed to touch more lives than ever before, and delivering its promise in three important ways. One, listen, talk to us anytime from anywhere. We've got 7,000 doctors and 30,000 healthcare professionals listening. Two, advise. We'll give you expert advice, advice you can rely on. Because it comes from India's number one healthcare provider. Three, assist. We bring you India's largest health network of pharmacies, clinics, hospitals, and health insurance experts. Twenty million people already trust us for their care, and a further fifty thousand people are discovering this every day. Apollo twenty four seven. Expertise is for everyone. Namaskar and welcome to Apollo 24/7's Health Hour. Health Hour is a show every Sunday that brings you Apollo's experts to your home, where you can sit at your home and ask all the questions and queries that you have been wanting to ask an expert. In today's session, we are going to talk about women's health. We are going to burst some myths and answer some questions around common gynecological issues. Joining us shortly on the show is Dr. Bindu K. S., a senior consultant gynecologist and an obstetric obstetrician from Apollo Hospitals, Navi, Mumbai. So keep your questions ready. I would request all of you to please type your age, your gender, your question, and if you're asking a question on behalf of somebody, some additional details in one question so that it will be easy for the doctor. 
to answer all the queries uh, properly. So get ready with your questions. Anything uh, about women's health, we shall take them up very shortly. Before we start the show, let me tell you that on this show, you also can find a health quiz coming up. You can win prizes and uh, gift vouchers from Apollo 247. And we shall be giving away certain gift coupons towards the end. Stay with us. And uh, let me also introduce a wonderful show, which is called a uh, wonderful offer, which is called Sachi Saving a Child's Health Initiative, which is an Apollo Foundation along with Apollo 24 seven. This mission is to make quality health care accessible to children, especially underprivileged children at no cost. More than 10 pediatric specialists and who are renowned Apollo expert pediatricians are uh, coming forward to give the service which benefits children across India. To know more about this uh, Sachi, please scan the QR code which is on the screen. You'll find more details and spread the word. It's a good work. The good work needs to be spread. And also that we are all, uh, the country is battling COVID and we are getting better. Before uh, we go forward, let's understand that COVID also has long-term care. We need to take care of ourselves. If you or somebody from your family has recovered from COVID-19, do take the small recovery self checker, which not which does not take more than five minutes of your time. It will tell you if you are at a risk, if you need to consult a doctor, how well are you recovering? When do you require to consult a doctor? It's very simple. Bus thode questions answer kar do, aapka report card tayar ho jayega. There's a link in the chat box and start your free assessment. So, uh, bus sambhal ke rahiyega, uh, safe rahiyega. Let's start today's uh, episode. Women's health, common gynecological issues. We are going to be joined by Dr. Bindu Kes, who is a senior consultant gynecologist and obstetrician from uh, Apollo Hospitals, Navi Mumbai, who has more than 21 years of experience in obstetrics and gynecology. Her special interest is high-risk pregnancy, infertility, and vaginal surgeries. She is a Guinness record holder for participating in the largest cervical screening camp. She is the DNB coordinator and teacher to PG students at Apollo Hospitals Navi Mumbai. And she's an author of several papers in international and national journals. Ma'am, it's our um, pleasure to have you on the show today, ma'am. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, Jansi, and good morning, viewers. Thank you, ma'am. It's Women's Day. Just another two days, we are going to celebrate uh, Women's Day. I would always say that a happy woman is a healthy woman. You know, a woman can be happy only when she's healthy. So I wish all our women to stay healthy and take care of their health as a priority. And Apollo 247 is always there to be their health partner. And joining us on this wonderful occasion is also a gynecologist letting women talk about health. You must be seeing a lot of women who neglect their health, ma'am, when women's health doesn't become priority. What do you see in your consultations, ma'am? Yeah, see, women's health has always been uh, a low priority for them. But I definitely see, uh, definitely say that it should be a high priority because unless they take care of the health, they can't take care of the family or the community as well. So it's high time women find out what their real problems are, their sexual or reproductive issues or even the common ailments. They should, uh, if early detection is there, they can be getting well soon. And then obviously mm -hmm. the family health and their health is also uh, comes uh, greatly. Yes, ma'am. So let's understand women that you are very important. Please take care of yourself and get your health as a priority. Ma'am, uh, there are most of the issues which women think that they should not be discussing and they get these uh, unnecessary hesitations, which I call, but I understand where they are coming from, especially when they need to talk about urinary tract infections. People don't talk about it and menstrual issues. What are the common urinary tract infections or any urinary infections for that matter that women face and uh, when should they approach a doctor? Yeah, see, uh, Jansi, when we talk for about urinary problems in women, uh, first of all, I should say why it's so common. Because uh, as you all know, it's an open space and it is close to the anal region. And like for men, for like men, it's not so long, the urethra or the urine pipe, which we call. So women are more prone to infection and obviously with uh, the reproductive age group, most of them women, they are sexually active. So they most of the time they come with uh, urinary tract infections. So they have a burning or a, a burning pain, increased frequency of urination or a pelvic pain or the abdominal pain. So most of the time they feel drinking water is okay. So sometimes uh, like I have not drunk enough water. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, keep on drinking water and sometimes it subsides. But most yes. of the time, 
yeah mind you this if you don't get it treated at that point it can lead to recurrent infections which of course can uh, affect later on the um, urinary system as well it can ascend to the kidneys and cause major damages so it's uh, so you should recognize the urinary tract infection and treat it properly and coming to the exactly. elderly yeah so huh. and then you know if we don't talk about it and we let it go and progress into a larger complicated issue yes definitely so uh, the coming to the elderly women they have other issues like incontinence as you say they have an involuntary sensation of uh, passing urine so most of the time they feel that it's the age related and they don't come up with it and it's so embarrassing for them to speak that they are leaking urine so most of the times uh, there are yeah so they don't come up with that so it's Uh, so it can be a stress incontinence which we say when the women because of the estrogen deficiency or repeated childbirths the angle between the bladder and the urine pipe gets disturbed and they can ca cause uh, like leakage of urine when they cough or sneeze or when they are in the public so it's so embarrassing mm -hmm. for them they don't come out of it but actually jansi i would like to say there are enough treatment for this and we recognize it early and treat it then all those they, they would have a good healthy lifestyle so uh, the women should come out with such issues in the open so they they we are uh, nowadays uh, neighborhood uh, gynecologists are so friendly or talking in groups they can talk to the uh, women uh, they have uh, friends or any uh, like household uh, people they can talk to them and then uh, i think most of the issues can be addressed in that way great ma'am so as we say break the silence please approach somebody who can help you and discuss it out also okay. let's talk about you know the next immediate hesitation and unless it becomes a problem nobody comes out as the vaginal discharge we understand that there are certain normal discharges and there will be certain discharges which have to be uh, uh, addressed and which can be cause of concern please okay. explain what is a normal vaginal discharge and what can be considered as a cause of harm or a cause of alarm yes the discharge vaginal discharge can be normal or we call it physiological that is women nearing the ovulation that is the mid cycle have got a slimy thin sort of discharge which is uh, which is actually uh, helping the eggs uh, will be helping the sperms to migrate and meet the eggs that is the normal kind of discharge then towards the menstruation the discharge is sort of thick and uh, it's like uh, the when you were uh, nearing the uh, just few days before menstruation it is thick but if it is causing soreness burning or redness or if it is foul smelling these things have to be addressed and it may be a cause of an infection so at that point yeah. of time the person should meet the gynecologist and take adequate treatment okay so but uh, you know most of the time we don't address and then itna ho jata hai the white discharge becomes so much so that that there is a uh, hidden cause behind it and we don't talk about it so what are the complications uh, that the vaginal discharges might lead us to if ignored yes yeah. so vaginal discharges can be fungal or bacterial so suppose if it is a most of the time it's a simple yeast infection and uh, women it can be treated with uh, topical applications of creams or pessaries but sometimes if it is bacterial it can ascend to the upper reproductive organs and especially in the reproductive age group it can even cause uh, fertility issues so it is so even some sort of discharge uh, has to be addressed if it is uh, abnormal so that is the concern yeah. right ma'am and uh, uh, to understand uh, the next one is most of us worry about heavy bleeding what is a normal menstrual flow and when do i have to worry about heavy bleeding okay so every woman uh, i would put it like that way menstrual or menses is variable in uh, different uh, person to person so suppose for a woman it is uh, it may be labeled as scanty or it may be labeled as uh, heavy flow for her but ideally uh, if it is affecting her day to day life if she is soaking more pads than usual or if she has to change her pads very often or uh, it is very uh, difficult to measure it uh, it is said it is said that menstrual flow is actually 3 to 4 tablespoon only in each cycle so if it is more than 80 ml it is considered abnormal but it's uh, diff difficult to quantify or measure so we put it this way to the patient 
like suppose uh, if your bleeding was uh, uh, how do you quantify it as abnormal so if it is affecting her daily day to day activities and if she is finding that she is soaking more pads and if it is prolonged and uh, every uh, is associated with clots then definitely it is abnormal yes ma'am so uh, also uh, i did not uh, mention this earlier to you but uh, not having regular periods is also an issue having heavy menstrual flow is uh, an issue but not having uh, regular periods is also an issue so we see a lot of women which uh, who are under this bracket called pcos can you please explain what is this and uh, what are the scanty periods why are they uh, like that yeah see nowadays uh, pcod see many names are there pco pcod and pcos so actually it's a multi system disorder so if it is pcod it is just confined to the ovaries we say it's a one of the most common hormonal disorders in women earlier it was only 10 percentage but now it is affecting even 20 to 30 percentage of uh, women so women present with irregular cycles they don't menstruate for months together when they menstruate they have heavy flow they have skin related issues like uh, pimples they have abnormal hair growth thinning of the hair and also these women have lot of weight gain issues and they have also psychological issues like depression because of their body contour and these things actually it's you can put it as a lifestyle uh, disease so mm. uh, if it goes if you don't address this issue at the right moment it can go to the uh, polycystic ovary syndrome which we saw the which we say the pcos because then it turns to the metabolic disease that is it can women can have hypertension diabetes they can have increased cholesterol level and it can even lead to uh, cancers in the lining of the womb which we call the endometrial cancers so uh, the pcod is a disease which has to be kept at check right so how do you take care of this ma'am uh, as you said this is more of a uh, affecting more and more number of women so yeah. is this treatable completely or do we just have to manage this yeah jansi uh, pcod is not treatable it's there is no one stop cure for pcod so it is like you control the signs and symptoms so that it doesn't aggravate so but i would right. definitely say that lifestyle changes that is you are like you practice some uh, exercises and you have a good balanced diet and even weight reduction of 5 to 10 percentage can uh, reduce the symptoms or signs of pcod so these are the lifestyle modification or the lifestyle changes is the main stay of treatment of pcod but other so issues you. yeah but other issues if women come with menstrual issues we treat it that way if they have fertility issues we treat it that way or if cosmetic issues then we treat it that way but uh, the main goal of treatment is lifestyle changes for pcod so abam uh, pcos can it affect the uh, fertility of women and how does it affect yeah some women uh, you can say some women even with pco have no difficulty in conception pco as you know is that the eggs are not ovulating fully or they don't mature into a uh, uh, fully mature egg so they have fertility okay. issues yeah not every woman around uh, 15 to 20 percent can have difficulty in conception so if the women is not able to uh, conceive and if she is going into a high uh, age bracket then definitely she has to consult a fertility specialist done so let's also talk about endometrial issues we understand that initially when endometrial issues used to surface hysterectomy was the only answer and women always used to hesitate to get their uh, uterus removed or it was done without even thinking it it used to it, it turned like a pandemic earlier ki har jagah hysterectomy karte the one one stop ki tarah but now what are the stages in uh, uh, what are the treatment progressions in endometriosis and is the surgery only answer no definitely not endometriosis is uh, for the viewers benefit i would like to tell that endometriosis is the deposition of the endometrium or the lining of the womb outside the uterus that is you know that uterus has uh, connected to the tube so through the uh, uh, through the tubes the back flow of the lining of the womb happens and this is deposited on the ovaries and it, since it is uh, influenced by hormones it grows every month and it can form even cysts which we call the chocolate cyst or endometriotic cyst so women right. get present with multiple problems they can have pain during menstruation which is uh, their pelvic pain abdominal pain even uh, sexual contact can cause pain 
and also they have fertility issues since it is affecting the tubes and the ovaries so it's like our main aim is to uh, reduce the thickness of the lining of the womb in such treatment previously the only solution was uh, uh, his, uh, you can say uh, remove the uterus if she was uh, if she has completed a family here the treatment is vary on the uh, symptoms of the person the age of the person and whether she is interested in pregnancy or not so if for fertility wise the treatment is mainly addressing the uh, uh, like uh, if she is not able to ovulate or some tubal issues are there then surgery is the main stay of treatment that is taking the tubes and the ovaries and removing the endometriotic cysts but if it is her uh problems with menstruation or pain or other issues sexual issues hormones are the main stay treatment that is we can give her either oral contraceptive pills uh, every month regularly or even uh, progesterone for that matter are given that will reduce the uh, thickness of the lining nowadays devices which contain progesterone are also there uh, which can be uh, placed inside the womb and this will also give uh, good relief so endometriosis is a condi- along with that definitely as uh, lifestyle changes also has to play a good role patient ha- person has to relieve her stress or tension and practice any sort of exercise be it yoga or any other aerobics or any sort of exercise so all these issues uh, along with weight reduction diet everything definitely plays a um, treatment for endometriosis because again it's like uh, if these kind of issues are uh, more common in women who have who practice a very unhealthy lifestyle or have stress issues okay okay then ma'am so understanding that one has to talk about these and then take a right decision at the right time so silence doesn't work here understand what you're going through and discuss with the right health uh, uh, practitioner and apollo 247 is always there in case that you feel that you will not be able to come and meet a doctor in person use the platform where dr bindu case can be uh, consulted on uh, online right ma'am uh, one last question from my side before i see a lot of uh, people are asking questions on the youtube one last question from my side is uh, see for example uh, as a woman who's crossed 45 i need to take care of my health and i get my regular uh, test done uh, but what age a woman should start getting her breast examination or pap smears or any other cervical examinations what are the tests and how often should a woman take charge of her health yeah uh, talking about the breast health nowadays jancy we see uh, many cancers in young women also breast cancers yes. so women yes. uh, once they cross their 20s should have a self examination of the uh, breast that is they can do it every month uh, once after the menstruation so they can even while having a bath under the shower or while they are lying down they can check there are many uh, videos available uh, how to check for um, breast problems and if they find something unusual the first thing they need to is to visit a doctor uh, if they the doctor feels that something is abnormal then he or she might advise a, a ultrasound or a mammogram so mammogram usually uh, is a part of the health checkup after the 40s only so around the 40 45 years only we do a mammogram because it's after all radiation we don't subject women to radiation um, unless it is required and it's a part of the health checkup after the 40 or 45 years coming to the pap smear uh, pap smear is an uh, like is nothing but we examine the uh, uterus mouth or the neck of the womb which we call the cervix the secretions around that are taken with a um, uh, with a uh, which we call the ir spatula or an uh, it's like a brush we just scrape the lining of the um, uh, around the cervix and then subject it for microscopic examination this is very helpful to detect any precancerous conditions of the uh, cervix so women should it's a part of the health checkup and women should have an ide- ideally a pap smear examination from 24 years of age you don't need okay. uh, yeah you don't need it to do yearly it is actually done every 3 years but if it is combined with an hpv hpv as you know is the virus which is causing the cervical cancer and nowadays vaccination is available for the uh, hpv so if you are combining with the hpv test then we need to examine or do this test every 5 years and it is it can be done up to the age of 65 
Great, ma'am. Last week, we did discuss about how important it is to get our girls uh, vaccinated from a disease that can be prevented. So HPV vaccine is something that uh, girls can get at an age. Yes. So let me take uh, questions from our audience. A lot of questions that I see are uh, related to PCOD and PCOS. Um, so uh, one question that I wanted to ask you is, what is the lifestyle? You had suggested certain lifestyle changes, ma'am. So uh, somebody wanted to know what is a good diet and uh, way to change our lifestyle to manage PCOS or PCOD. Yeah, so I'll put it this way, coming to the diet, it should be a balanced diet. So uh, basically, the, the you should avoid all refined uh, things like refined carbohydrates have to be uh, avoided and more of protein should be included in the diet. They should It should not be that the fat component should all, all, all obviously should be there in the diet because fat, little bit of fat is important for the skin and the hair also. So uh, basically the carbohydrate refined things like uh, I will put it this way, maida or any biscuits, pastries, ice creams, chocolates, all those things have to be uh, like uh, what uh, and outside eating should be reduced to a major extent. But you, you can do it uh, like one, once. It doesn't mean that you can completely stop all those it's very difficult for uh, also people go for partying or something yeah so along with that diet exercises so you should boost your metabolism in such a way that you are burning out the calories which uh, you are eating so uh, the diet should be it should be not much of binge eating it should not be refined carbohydrates should be avoided and uh, more proteins in the diet and uh, it should be a sort of balanced diet with little fats also and uh, at the same time, practice exercises. 30, 40 minutes uh, for five days a week is more than enough. Be it any sort of exercises, whether it's yoga, it's aerobics, it's swimming, it's jogging. It doesn't mean that you have to confine yourself to uh, even weight training for that matter. Whatever is uh, helpful for you, you can practice that. Kind Be of active. Thing. Exactly. So Amar Prashti and Murli Manohar Banerji, that was your question and that is answered and it, that helps a lot of uh, women around and please do take care. It's not just women's role of their uh, health, it's also a lot to concern with men and then their proactiveness and understanding of women's health around. So men asking these questions, I'm very happy that they are taking care of their women in, in their life. Yeah, and don't is, men, come and yeah. talk to you. <laughs> it is a very uh, welcome attitude nowadays we see that men are more interested and you know that the theme for this year's uh, international women's day is break the bias so it break is a gender bias. equality uh, today for a sustainable tomorrow so men are definitely the people who should uh, come forward and address women's issues yes ma'am this is uh, yeluri kamal who's asking uh, issues anemia due to heavy menstrual bleeding and also fibroids uh, doctor as per a uh, doctor's consultation 30 mg of elemental iron uh, we've been taking is it sufficient daily can we go up to 150 mg also split into three doses depending on uh, the side effects we want to continue yeah, uh, so basically uh, with heavy menstrual bleeding, women uh, do tend to lose more of their blood and land up in anemia. So uh, see, uh, the one thing has to be addressed is correct your cause first. So uh, keeping on popping iron tablets doesn't help. So you have to continue with the iron supplements definitely. But what is the cause of heavy menstrual bleeding that has to be addressed first. And regarding the intake of iron, uh, like 30 mg, see there is a quantity of iron even how much you take only a specific quantity is absorbed by your body and uh, the if you take excess sometimes you can have intolerance issues like you can have gastritis you can have nausea vomiting constipation sometimes loose tools so whatever is prescribed by the doctor 30 mg of elemental iron is fair enough but if your hemoglobin is dropping to a a substantially low level then uh, the doctor might suggest iron injection so that uh, like injections will increase the iron quantity uh, very fast because oral iron takes a lot of time uh, to get your iron stores to normal. Done. Thank you for answering that, ma'am. Next is Santhia Nadrajan. Uh, good morning, doctor. My mother is 45 years old, diabetic and an asthma patient. Weight is also on the higher side. She's got multiple fibroids in uterus. The biggest one is 4.5 centimeters. It started five to seven years ago. Um, when, when they identified it was millimeters, but now it's come to centimeters. Is surgery mandatory in such cases? 
see depends surgery for fibroids is not compulsory for every person it is like depends upon the symptoms if she is having if she is having heavy menstrual flow or pain or the fibroid is of a bigger size that it can cause lead to um, cancerous changes but that is very rare like uh, fibroids turning cancerous are very very rare so in those issues the doctor is the best person to check whether you need a surgery for simply for uh, small fibroids with no symptoms usually we don't advise surgery since um, i understand that your mother is also diabetic hypertensive and asthmatic so she has health issues other so subjecting her to surgery might be a problem she has to have a proper anesthesia checkup and all those before done and if it is 4.5 cm i don't think might be causing problems for her and it depends where the fibroid is located so if it is inside the lining of the womb or in the middle layer sometimes it can cause heavy menstrual issues but if it is growing in the outer layer of the uh, womb usually it doesn't cause many problems so depending upon your uh, scan reports and the checkup by the doctor she will decide whether you have to go for a surgery it's not mandatory done Never. so and it's not the same thing for everybody you know just one exactly. fibroid and everybody does not need to go for the same treatment exactly yeah. this way different differs from person to person done this is amreen tahir's question uh, she has had a third cesarean section and she is not feeling very great after i'm not able to stand for even a few minutes what should i do okay so how long uh, when did she have a cesarean section uh, yes she... not many details that's where i ask everybody uh, to please type in give us full details uh, and in if possible in one question so that will be easy for me to read out your question i see a lot of you are typing question in five to six parts but i need to you know before they finish the question i'll see other questions coming in request audience to please type your questions in one go it will be easy for all of us and especially doctor to answer ma'am i don't have any other details about this ma'am no maybe so. i can put it that way maybe she must have had a recent uh, cesarean section or like it depends see, see suppose what is your uh, like what are the uh, situations which uh, led to her cesarean sections what is the age of the patient whether she was having any pre existing morbidities we say if she had anemia she had hypertension diabetes yes. and whether the surgery was difficult like see because with two cesareans third cesarean there may be a lot of scarring inside so the doctor's approach on uh, doing the cesarean section might be difficult where uh, difficult surgery must have uh, been performed and uh, her health issues previously all these might have contributed to her but nowadays um, cesarean sections uh, we use less of uh, uh, like tissue handling we uh, use less of uh, sutures we use less of instruments so that the patient recovery and we follow an enhanced recovery protocol we say that is we make the patient walk early feed her early and remove her uh, lines iv lines and catheter early so uh, maybe we we cannot say then see what uh, she has gone through uh, maybe uh, it was very difficult surgery or any other health issues were there so maybe that's why but it's only a matter of time usually women do get better within 6 weeks time they usually get better done so amrin tahir ji aap dr bindu se consult kar sakte hain she is on apollo 247 and you can consult her online for further examinations as well so um there's a question from a man who's inquiring about menopausal age so what is the common menopausal age and uh, what are the adverse effects and uh, what can uh, we know more about it let yes. me get the name oh. yeah yes yes menopause menopause means complete absence of menstruation for one year that is suppose in uh, if we take in uh, our country or uh, natural age of menopause is between 45 to 55 and most women have it around the 48 to 51 years so but any women who having menopause before 40 years that is premature menopause is again an issue because with oh. yeah so with menopause what happens that is the your ovary function drops the eggs are no longer produced the estrogen or the hormone content get reduced and it's a gradual phase it's a it's there is no permanent uh, like uh, you don't have uh, only in when you have surgeries where you remove the ovaries for or cancer surgeries you have a sudden menopause it's actually a gradual transition so women can have issues like 
they can have usually they start with hot flushes they feel uh, more of warm sweating and warmth and sweating especially at the night they can't stand near the kitchen they feel uncomfortable and uh, sometimes they have the some uh, psychological issues they get easily worked up they become irritable they have confusion the skin turns uh, dry and also sometimes they can have repeated urinary tract infections but these are all uh, temporary and it uh, uh, varies from person to person a person who is having a good balanced diet and a healthy lifestyle with diet and exercise are able to pull on through menopause very nicely and easily but main importance is if a sudden uh, a cessation of the ovarian hormones happens it can affect your bone health and heart health also so it has to be uh, so if you have a premature menopause or an early age in menopause we usually give some replacement therapy that is in the form of hormones to those women to address their yeah. bone and yeah bone and heart issues so it's so can we continue a- to to add to what you're saying right now this is pulkit's question around the uh, menopause now i also have aruna thakur's question in around the same 45 uh, uh, years female periods after 3 months last year also it didn't happen for 6 months hypothyroid mm-hmm. where thyroid is managing between uh, 4.5 to 5 is this a sign of menopause i am a working woman yeah uh, as i told uh, before also if when you have complete absence of menstruation for one year it is labeled menopause so she must be in the perimenopause we put it this around the period 2 3 years before the menopause the women can have irregular cycles as i said earlier it's like your eggs are not produced every month uh, the ovary functions uh, gradually drops so she must be in the perimenopausal age group so in that uh, time period she has to see whether her cycles are getting heavy really heavy uh, or she has other issues like uh, if she has uh, hot flushes or any other issues if she has aching bones or in uh, she has to meet the doctor when she has uh, heavy irregular cycles or cycles are prolonged and if she has any other issues of this matter you know what i've understood from this mom though it's a natural process of the body weaving off and weaving in or leading to something else there is a change which can affect you physically so keeping your gynecologist informed or a consultation is very important right from your fertility uh, period to post menopausal it is important to have a gynecologist as your best friend yeah definitely because nowadays uh, the online uh, chat forms are available so it's not uh, very difficult to approach a, a gynecologist or a person even your i would put it like way general physician also see like general exactly. doctor your, your family physician he uh, is making that, that is your uh, spider man or your friendly neighborhood so you can if he or she feels that uh, you need to meet a gynecologist your family physician will definitely suggest great ma'am so that's it so women again take home message for today is do not ignore your health no symptom can be ignored take charge of your health next question also around menopause ma'am this is aruna thakur who is uh, no no aruna thakur ka ho yeah i'm sorry sorry uh, it's a post menopausal question which i was looking at um uh, kavita hello doctor i'm post menopausal i have severe burning in my uh, urethral area for two months urine routine culture cbc usg all are normal it did not respond to antibiotics and estrogen cream please advise okay so uh, she needs uh, around this age if uh, she is your know, urine culture is normal and there is no urinary tract infection and if estrogen cream is not helping her then i think she need to visit a urologist kavita i think you need to visit a urologist sometimes uh, there can be an associated because most of the time we just associate it as a urinary tract infection but it must be another uh, problem also there can be some other issues like uh, which is called the bladder pain syndrome where you have burning sensation but it's not actually the urinary tract infection or the um, urologist can check do some function studies or even a camera check of the uh, urethra to see whether any associated features are there to um, attributing to her condition done so it's important to find out what it is uh, next is uh, mahajabi in banu she is 36 year old uh, she is going through vaginal itching and burning i need to know what are the precautions and how to prevent it to continue vijay kumar is also asking about uh, genital itching and what are the solutions yes uh, as i put it earlier also it depends upon the whether it's she is in the reproductive age group or whether she is around the perimenopausal age 36 year old man 
Maya yeah. Jabin is 36 years old. So reproductive in, uh, age mostly it must be she can have vaginal itching uh, due to uh, simple yeast infection or it can be a mixed sort of yeast plus bacterial infection. So most of the times uh, they might be um, like treatment uh, whether the person must not have been uh, for fully uh, treated or whether they have not met the doctor once the treatment was over or uh, like once they feel better they tend to drop off the medication. So all these can lead to recurrent infections. Along with that they need to also check whether the sugar levels are normal. So, and if the mm -hmm. patient has got high sugar levels, this can lead to uh, repeated vaginal infections, particularly yeast infections. If the woman is on high dose antibiotics she has taken or some medications for other illness, all these can lead to mm, repeated uh, vaginal infections. So, because vagina is an area where a lot of microorganisms are there that they are the friendly microorganisms but when there is some imbalance happening they tend to overgrow they lead to infections yes but here's a, a pretty nine shall pretty nine uh, her daughter is nine year old whose weight is not increasing and uh, she got her the daughter got her period at nine and a half years of age that was the first period time. Now she's very uh, having very less urine during her periods. And uh, what should be her cycle like as she's too young? Will it affect my daughter's height as she had a period at nine and a half years age? This, yeah, this is, is like quite changing, ma'am. From what I have experienced, what my parent, uh, or my, my mothers and grandmothers have experienced, everything is changing now. And what's the cause of this early menarche, ma'am? Yeah, see now, now nowadays previously it should be it, it was around 14 years where women uh, or girls used to have menstruation. Now the age has definitely come down to 10 or even 9 we see girls having menstruation. So maybe early, yeah, there is a connection between the uh, brain that is the hypothalamus and the pituitary we say that from there the hormone signal starts uh, releases and then they uh, like uh, then the ovaries start producing eggs and when uh, pregnancy doesn't happen the menstruation so there is a cycle which is going on so initially uh, by when early maturation of this axis happens that is the hypothalamo pituitary ovarian that is then you have uh, girls uh, tend to have early uh, menstruation so nowadays because of their food habits their weight gain and uh, they are uh, like they don't uh, they are always on the tv or the uh, mobiles they don't do physical, they don't do physical activity and also it depends upon uh, the, this obese uh, that what you say the weight gain also the fat also has a connection with the uh, ovulatory uh, function so if you are putting on more weight also then also you tend to have an early menstruation but anything less than uh, see what you say um, eight years definitely you need to meet a endocrinologist or a hormone specialist because we will have to stop the menstruation for the meanwhile so that her other um, functions as if she's concerned with the height and all those so because early maturation if it happens then these issues can uh, happen so if it is happening anytime so between is nine and a half year old so what is it considered normal or is it early menarche yeah nine and a half years because anything we say uh, before uh, 10, 10 years before eight years definitely uh, it is abnormal so nine and a half is not that uh, abnormal so she can have she can keep these girls don't have menstruation every month also sometimes they menstruate every two three cycles also or sometimes they have prolonged the flow so it's just a transition phase that is the maturity of the axis has to take place and the eggs have to form every month then just so they have a typical cyclical pattern so here more importance to their diet and lifestyle diet means they should have high iron rich diet and they should be put into some activity like cycling or dancing or jogging. So they should be very active. These girls should be very active. And uh, all those food nakras, they should uh, avoid. So they should have uh, good, yeah. good food and balanced food is very important for their long uh, health, healthy life. Because it's as they start early, it, it goes really very long and it makes a lot of difference in giving them good lifestyle. That's the best thing that you can give any daughter. Good yeah. food and good lifestyle. Yes. Ma'am, this is uh, Roshni's question. What is polyp? Uh, and other than surgery, uh, is there a way to uh, make polyps in uterus go away? Will it be hard to conceive if I have polyps in uterus? And yeah, that's it. Ma that's the question. 
Yeah, so this is again a very concern for women who are seeking fertility issues. And for baby polyp, is, polyp, there are many types of polyp. If she is talking about the endometrial polyp, see, actually, it's like nothing but the thicken, the lining of the womb gets thickened and it forms a swelling. So that is called polyp. So if she is having irregular cycles then or thick lining of the womb, she is uh, more prone to have polyp issues. So if it is uh, causing more uh, issues for her that like abnormal bleeding or like bleeding in between uh, two cycles or if she has heavy bleeding uh, or if the size is too much that um, the uh, implantation of the embryo might be a cause of concern in cases of uh, fertility treatment then it is advisable to remove the polyp and okay. this polyp My, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, polyp uh, especially in post uh, menopausal women or nearing the uh, menopausal age then also sometimes precancerous changes are uh, uh, like likely to happen in them in those cases also this need to be removed Yes, ma'am, uh, uh, as we're running short of time in the last 10-15 minutes, I would request you to give brief answers so that we can cover more of our questions. <laughs> Here's a question about uh, fertility after 30 year old. So, Naina Shet, uh, we are getting, uh, girls are getting pregnant after 30 years because we're settling in late into marriages. Will that get difficult to conceive? What are the problems, common problems that one can expect? Yes, age is again a very uh, determining factor of fertility. Uh, nowadays, as uh, 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 the lady was telling, uh, 30 years is a, like the career is at peak stage. But I would advise any women before the age of 35 to plan for fertility because definitely there is a, a plateauing and a steep uh, drop of fertility after 35 years. Done, ma'am. So, Renu Singh is 38 year old and she's suffering from heavy bleeding during periods and uh, 18 to 20 pads per day. And what are the tests that she has to undergo, ma'am? Yes, definitely. It's uh, time she meets a gynecologist and uh, they will do a clinical examination and advise the test. Most likely they will advise a scan, a complete blood count, her thyroid test and uh, depending upon that treatment will be given. Yes. I'm Savita Simon. Um, good morning, ma'am. Even after trying my best during ovulation time, I'm not conceiving. I'm 27. I'm very healthy following a good lifestyle. It's been four years into marriage. So fertility is always a question that women face. What's your advice here, ma'am? Yes, uh, see if uh, me, me, women do, uh, she's 27 and she said she's regularly menstruating. If her, uh, if she has not checked the tubes, uh, then she has to check the tubes and uh, the doctor might uh, do a follicular study or an ovulation study, whether she's ovulating properly and the partner's count, semen count is also very important. That has to be checked. Yes. So it's not just women in fertility, mm -hmm. it's together. Partners are also very important. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is Advesh Kumar. Um, uh, no, no. Advesh Kumar is also asking about heavy periods and uh, painful periods. And Jayashri, I have I'm having painful periods and change in bowel movements before uh, uh, more prone to more prone to constipation despite good water and nutrition and fiber. So, uh, are the gut and periods together in this month? Yeah, see, sometimes uh, she might, uh, has she done an ultrasound scan? So uh, it's good if she does an ultrasound scan because sometimes um, endometriosis can cause these issues. Like uh, the deposition of endometriosis in uh, behind the bowels can cause these issues. Yeah. Uh, Reem Bhattacharya, more than one year, very heavy menstrual bleeding, large clots causing very low ferritin and, uh, and regular periods. Age is 36, married for uh, 8 years, no children, subserosal, small fibroid, is it safe to take registron CR? Yes, it, uh, mm -hmm. registron CR is a progesterone hormone. So uh, depending upon the, uh, whether she is planning a pregnancy, then she needs to address the issues uh, first of bleeding first and uh, then after few cycles she should seek uh, fertility treatment. Registron CR can be given temporarily to reduce the bleeding. But uh, usually first we try with some medications just to stop the bleeding. Then if she's not responding, then hormones are advised. Done. And a lot of uh, fertility related questions that I see uh, towards the end, ma'am. Uh, what to do? Sharanya Mohan, uh, what to do if my egg will not rupture after two HCG injections? And also to continue the similar question, Sunil Nala, what if mobility is 55% doctor suggested to go with IVF? 
see it all depends because it's very difficult to say with uh, uh, like mortality 55% the fertility varies from person to person so suppose even with very low mortality with one cycle we have seen uh, like the couple conceiving and sometimes even one tube block we see uh, the women conceiving so it's all uh, depends if she has uh, if he or the couple have taken treatment so much and still it's not responding then they should uh, go for they go to a fertility clinic and uh, get themselves checked fully and then if uh, suggested if so many years have passed for natural then nowadays uh, plenty of assisted techniques are available which might uh, help the couple uh, achieve a successful pregnancy done um talking about uh, uh, conception there was something no no i'm sorry ma'am uh... PCOS ke baare mein, as suggested by gynecologists, medica medications like Novolin uh, is being given continuously. Any other lifestyle changes, uh, measures to plan pregnancy? Same thing, ma'am. Uh, somebody who is into PCOS and unable to conceive after... Uh, what is the... I just lost the question, ma'am. Pradipta Bhat, uh, Bhattajarji. My wife is 36. Not, that is also something re related to heavy bleeding and fertility, ma'am. PCOS, yes. heavy bleeding and fertility, ma'am. Yes, PCOS, as I told earlier also, has to be uh, treated according to the symptom. If the couple are seeking fertility, first of all, like uh, as I said earlier, the weight reduction is very important because even if she conceives, increased weight can cause problems with pregnancy also. That she can go for miscarriages, she can have diabetes, hypertension and also growth problems in the baby and also difficult delivery. So definitely um, weight reduction goes, uh, even 10 percentage of uh, like losing the weight can cause a reduction in uh, symptoms and give, like her cycles can become ovulatory even. So uh, if still after weight loss uh, and exercises she is not able to conceive, the doctor uh, will give medications to increase the egg formation which we call uh, ovulogens which so the fertility enhancing drugs are given and along with that PCOS is a condition where insulin resistance is there. So sometimes uh, medications like metformin which reduce the level of insulin are given. Still they are not able to conceive then laparoscopic uh, treatment or keyhole surgeries where the cysts are drilled and uh, then uh, the uh, the PCOD, is, uh, PCOD comes uh, back to the hormones levels come back to normal and then she is able to conceive. And again, if still this is not happening, then options of assisted techniques are definitely there. Done. Um, so COVID and post-COVID uh, recovery related questions that I'm seeing, Deepika, uh, a lot of questions that have been asked. After COVID, irregular, somebody was given remdesivir and also other treatments uh, for COVID in, in admission and they find irregular periods. Is this mm -hmm. common and when will this cycle, uh, is this due to COVID? See, we see a lot of uh, menstrual issues in women who had COVID infection. If it is only mild uh, asymptomatic COVID infection where the pa patient's health is not affected that much or she has been not on many medications or anti-coagulants, uh, we say, where to uh, reduce the clotting, then they don't have issues. But those women whose uh, health is affected because menstruation is again related to the health of the uh, women. So it may not be directly linked to the COVID medication she is taking. So her health, uh, overall health might be affected. So that must be causing to the causing the menstrual issues. But otherwise anticoagulant medications, if she is on uh, long, for, then also that can also cause heavy bleeding in those women. Okay. But uh, a lot of my friends as well, you know, after they've recovered, they did find that the cycle took time to get regularized yes. again. That's what I said because it is affecting COVID as a multi-system uh, disease again. It's affecting the whole uh, body. Yeah. Radha is asking this question. Daughter is 24-year-old, unmarried, and she is working, has problems with acne, heavy hair loss, and also has yeast infection, which is recurrent. Please advise any tests. Uh, lifestyle you have definitely uh, mentioned. What are the tests that one can take, ma'am? Yeah, so um, with her symptoms and signs, I feel that she must be having a polycystic ovarian disease only. So most of the time it's the clinical signs and symptoms, but uh, she can have a hormonal checkups done and an ultrasound scan, which can see that uh, the eggs are uh, like small, small cysts are seen in the ovaries and uh, we can diagnose the condition and the symptom can be addressed. And also the insulin levels and her sugar levels has also to be checked because she's having recurrent 
uh, yeast infection or itching. So that is also to be addressed. Yes, a lot of people are asking about supplements and uh, nutraceuticals. Uh, there are questions about, you know, B12 deficiency that might test as uh, being uh, vitamin deficiencies. Women do have certain deficiencies. What is your take on uh, nutraceuticals, collagen? And a lot of them are asking about uh, supplements. Yes, so we, uh, as uh, women do have a tendency to pop in uh, supplements after 35, 40. So definitely if they follow a healthy balanced diet or a good balanced diet, they need not have any supplements. That is, they have enough um, like calcium in their diet and enough green leafy vegetables, nuts, dry fruits and sprouts. Uh, and also the elderly women used to take the roots and tubers uh, which were there under, underneath the ground. These are all, actually they are all uh, plant-based uh, uh, estrogens. So these are all uh, good things. So they need, they need not have any separate supplements if she's following a, a healthy uh, lifestyle and a balanced diet. But of course, if they are uh, nowadays vitamin D deficiency and B12 is very common. So because they, we are, they are not exposed to the sunlight and more of like it's sedentary, don't uh, work out and just uh, being at home. So in that case where deficiency is identified and uh, then she needs to take supplements. But routine supplements for that matter, during the perimenopausal age, sometimes you can take calcium and vitamin D supplementation. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, like following a complete balanced diet is more than enough. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I will conclude with Shubha Nair's question and I'll leave you for top tips because Shubha is asking that I'm a working woman and I'm in a high stressed work environment. How do I balance my health? And how do I take care that I don't progress to gynecological issues? With that question, I leave you for top tips. Yes. How do women take care of their health? Yes, Subra, as you uh, told, like you are in a highly uh, so the, the stressful condition. So first of all, take uh, time for me time. Me time is very important for women. Take time for yourself and uh, in, uh, involve in stress uh, relieving uh, techniques. Talk with friends, go out with friends have some hobbies and also uh, have some so you can join the laughing clubs or you can take a night out with friends something of that matter find some me time for yourself yoga meditation all these things can be practiced and a good balanced diet definitely so so that you don't have any other issues and uh, be sure that your menstrual cycles are uh, very uh, regular and you don't gain uh, too much uh, weight that is also very important wonderful yes. ma'am thank you and the tips ma'am uh, would yeah. you want to give us some tips to take care yes women uh, need to prioritize uh, their uh, health issues definitely and especially the sexual and reproductive health issues has to be uh, thought of and especially when a woman is having irregular cycles when she is bleeding heavily or when she has urinary infections or some kind of um, discharge abnormal discharge she should visit a gynecologist uh, early enough so that early detection of these conditions can uh, prevent long-term complications and gynecological health issues in um, women. And moreover, the checking the breast and the uh, breast health is also very important and having a regular uh, three-yearly pap smear. Thank you Thank so you. much, Dr. Bindu. I know I couldn't take a lot of questions uh, due to time and last minute presentation of the questions, but uh, uh, I know that they, there were certain questions about a medical termination of pregnancy and if they can use over the counter pills and all, which I could not take the question here uh, for the debate, but any advice in unwanted pregnancies that you would give and leave, ma'am? Yes, unwanted pregnancies is a no welcome pregnancy. It has a lot of issues. So definitely they should go for a regular contraception method. So they can, uh, if they are not wishing now, pregnancy is by choice and not by chance. So women, when they, uh, like they should meet a gynecologist and nowadays a lot of uh, contraception is available, uh, which can be long term contraception or a short term. All these can be taken and uh, unwanted uh, for unwanted pregnancies. Uh, the uh, according to the government act uh, this these are not available over the counter because it can cause to uh, serious uh, issues and uh, un unwarranted terminations of pregnancy so that's why so it is very important to consult a practicing a practitioner, a practitioner to take care and it cannot be talked on this platform and i would advise yes. such uh, couples to contact dr bindu directly 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Thank definitely. you so much. Thank you for this wonderful time on a Sunday morning, and it's important to talk about women's health. You gave us more power on this day. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. So that was Dr. Bindu taking leave, and this is now your time to answer my questions. I'm going to ask you three questions. Health quiz coming up. Answer questions on YouTube chat only. Please uh, make sure that you're uh, typing your answer after I ask the question. Winner's name will be announced at towards the end of the show, uh, and the winners will be decided at the sole discretion of Apollo 2417. And winners, once you're declared a winner, please write back and uh, claim your prize at marketing at apollo247.com. Gift vouchers will be shared with you. Chaliye, questions aayenge aapke screen ke upar. The first question is, what does PCOS stand for? आज बहुत डिस्कस किया है हमने वॉट इज पी सी ओ एस स्टैंड फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वेन इज इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ एक्शन फॉर वीमेंस हेल्थ कब ऑब्जर्व करते हैं हम इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ एक्शन फॉर वीमेंस हेल्थ द क्वेश्चन लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच ऑप्शन और फीचर ऑन द अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन एप अलव्स यू टू गेट मेडिसिन एंड अदर एसेंशियल आइटम्स फ्री डेलीवर्ड एट योर डोर स्टेप रिपीट क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री Which option or feature on the Apollo 24/7 app allows you to get medicines and other essential items free delivered at your doorstep? Answer the questions on YouTube chat and wait for the winners. I shall declare. And it was really interesting to see a lot of men on women participating in the show and getting the answers uh, from a gynecologist. Well, now it's your time to uh, to uh, consult a GP. Let me give you this wonderful offer, which is one tap. just one tap consultation you can have a general physician in 15 minutes you can consult a general physician from apollo hospitals in just 15 rupees uh, sorry 15 minutes at 249 rupees only so you can book it right now it's an apollo doctor consultation in just one tap talk to a general physician online and also this uh, uh, this show also is giving you coupons which is hh247 we are giving you coupons which you can use on apollo 247 first download the app you must be having the app on your phone do download this because you will have entire apollo on your hand and when you download the app you can use this code which is hh247 get 199 rupees off on consultations with apollo doctors and uh, 20% off on medicine orders as well well being women's day Apollo 24/7 is announcing a wonderful offer for women which is a limited period offer which is limited slots and terms and conditions apply I'm going to announce the offer right now make sure that you or the women in your life are benefiting from this offer Apollo 24/7 is giving you an opportunity of consulting a gynecologist for just 1 rupee on 7th 8th and 9th of March on Apollo 247 only I repeat, Apollo two four seven is giving you an offer of consulting a gynecologist for rupees one only. One rupee may you consult a gynecologist for consult kar sakte ho on seventh, eighth, and ninth of March. This is a Women's Day special, limited slots. Go book yourselves uh, onto this, and terms and conditions apply. Winners of today's quiz are uh, Future Go Tamil, Savita Simon, and Dolly Gupta. Congratulations! Please write back to us and claim your gift vouchers. Thank you all for joining us this week. And next week, it's a very, very important topic again. It's brain injury and stroke. What do you know? Hear it from an Apollo expert. Thirteenth March, eleven a.m. Tune into Health Hour. If you do not want to miss this one and further sessions, there's a bell icon reminder. Ajayenge uh, aapko. Please do go ahead, subscribe this channel, and very, very important discussions that we make. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning and talking about women's health and common gynecological issues. I thank Dr. Bindu Kes for joining us as well. Thank you all. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.